using this prime weld ct 520d again um welding up so uh, i'm going to weld up three gates actually two for the yard and one for the chicken house so this is the chicken house one it's about six feet tall and about 40 inches wide and some of these welds are better than others but i used a um i haven't closed in the ends there I uh, used a 330 seconds 7018 at about 90 amps and came out alright. I think this is the un undercut a lot. I did undercut that a lot. It was moving too fast and or too many amps and burned that edge out. But the sides came out okay. There's some slag entrapment. Big, good enough for the chicken house. And it's all welded on the inside as well. So it's nice and square. And that'll hold it. Next, I'm going to use the plasma cutter to gouge these. And the plan is to just hold the plasma cutter right here. And squeeze the trigger. And hold it on there for a second and knock a little hole. So let's see how this works. But all I need to do, what I'm going to do is put that half inch square wire behind here. And then I'm just going to want to run a piece of wire through there just to tie it up with and tighten it down with. So I'm going to do that in a couple places. So really I just need to knock a little hole in each one. doesn't have to be pretty. That's all I need. Just enough to run a piece of safety wire around it. And this is a lot easier than drilling holes, obviously. So for this purpose, it's great. Now on this other gate, I've already welded up a smaller one for the yard, and this is just not very tall. Um, a little bit hard to see here, but it's a square. And I'm going to put board slats in the middle, run them up and down. And I'm a, I like steel over wood for making gates just because it'll never flex or get out of bend, you know, it'll never bend out of shape or twist or anything like that. Once it's done, it's done. So I squared this up, tacked it, made sure it was true, then welded it in. Um, so I'm going to, I welded this bar across here and you can see I just plasma cutted or pierce cut or whatever you cut, call it. Um, some holes across here and so uh, I tried to make them big enough for a real small drywall screw because I'm just going to use a real short small drywall screw that's pretty pretty skinny and I just kind of pierced the hole and then just kind of little made a little circle motion with my hand went to the next one pierce circle motion pierce circle motion so if they're not quite big enough I'll just put a little drill bit down them and try to drill them out um, and then that'll be along the top and I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom with this one I already pierced it. I just need to grind off the little rough edges there. And then I'm going to set that one across the bottom. After I set my boards in, I'll screw the boards in and then I'll just tack this bottom one to the ends right there and right there and maybe in the middle. And I'm not going to put it right against the steel here. I'm going to put it up just a little bit so that when water goes in there or snow goes in there and melts, it'll have a place to drain out. So that'll be the bottom. And then if the board's ever rot in five or ten years or whatever, and I want to change them out, I'll just cut that weld right there, grind it and grind it and grind the little tiny weld in the middle and pop it out and replace, pull the boards out and replace them and retack it back in and be done. So, so, and then I wanted this, this is just eighth inch angle iron um, by one and a half. So, what I did was I wanted to put this flat side right here where my fingers are um, facing the yard so that would be the nice side and so this back side where the screws will be going in will be the outside that faces the acreage so I needed a place to put um, some hinges so I just took another piece of angle of the same size laid it in here and welded along this edge welded a little bit along the back side um, again on the bottom edge and then a little bit on the outside. So this is just inch and a half by one eighth as well. And then just welded it here, here, and here um, with a stick welder. That's also 332 seconds, 
7018 at about 90 amps, 85, 90 amps. So I put two of those there, so those will be for the hinges. And then I put one more right here, and that'll be for the latch. And I'll be able to weld my latch onto that, or I guess I don't have to weld it. I can drill holes and bolt it on or whatever. Uh, but my plan is on this side, just because welding is so much easier than drilling holes and bolting, I'm going to weld the hinges on this side, um, top and bottom and along the edge here, and then I'll just bolt it to the wooden post that I have. And then if I ever need to move the hinges, I'll just cut them off with a grinder. Okay, so I'll make a follow-up video and we'll see how these look in the when they're done. So just getting these all pierced. Um, uh, get my glove on there with my teeth. So what's interesting here to me is that this is a scratch start plasma cutter. So this is not a pilot arc. And when we put it on the metal, that's just a Sharpie mark right there. When we put it on the metal. Cuts right through. I thought I was going to have to grind off the spot on every little spot. But I just scraped it just a little bit, I guess, just to knock enough paint off. And sure enough, it arced and cut on through. So the tip it's probably not in focus this is the original tip and I've made lots of cuts with this and I'm just touching it up with a wire brush every once in a while just to clean it up and it's still going so I bought a bunch of the consumables but I haven't used them yet so I'm sure I will eventually